Chapter 3.2 Physical Power and Resource Ownership Veni Vidi Vici Julius Caesar Reference 45 Chapter 3.2.1 Proof of Power is Proof of Ownership Imagine pre precious resources land, water, food, gold, resided on Earth many billions of years ago, long before our planet was inhabited by life. Assuming there are no living organisms capable of exerting physical power to secure access to these resources, would it make sense to claim they're owned? Would it make sense to claim that these resources qualify as something's property? If the reader answered yes, then how could the owner be identified if there's no living thing securing access to these resources? Resource must have an owner to qualify as being owned or to qualify as being something's property. If the reader answered no, then we have just established that the phenomenon we call property ownership is not strictly an abstract idea. Ownership has a physical signature in shared objective reality that is somehow related to physical power projection. Ownership has a physical signature in shared objective reality that is somehow related to physical power projection. The real world physical power projected by animals to gain and maintain access to resources is somehow related to the phenomenon we call ownership. Since the dawn of life on Earth, organisms have evolved increasingly more creative ways to project physical power to settle property disputes, secure control, authority over resources, achieve consensus on the state of ownership and chain of custody of property, and establish dominance hierarchies, aka pecking orders. The control authority over Earth's natural resources that many plants and animals enjoy today appears to be the byproduct of energy exerted over time, joules over seconds. This would imply that property ownership has a physical signature that can be denominated in watts. The control authority over Earth's natural resources that many plants and animals enjoy today appear to be the byproduct of energy exerted over time joules per second. This would imply that property ownership has a physical signature that can be denominated in watts. Watts signal ownership. Organisms determine what they own based not on what they say, but on what they do, how they project their watts. When an organism decides to stop owning a resource, they stop spending the watts needed to gain and maintain their access to it. Perhaps an organism stops spending watts because their priorities change. Perhaps it simply doesn't value the resource anymore. Either way, when an organism stops using watts to secure their access to a resource, their perceived ownership of that resource disappears. Ownership of the discarded resource then passes on to the next able-bodied organism capable of and willing to spend the watts necessary to gain and maintain access to it. Watts appear to be only part of ownership that is based in that place we call objective physical reality. Physical power appears to be the only means through which organisms, 99.9 .9 of which are incapable of abstract thought, can achieve consensus on legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of physical property. Physical power appears to be the only means through which organisms can achieve consensus on legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of physical property. Most organisms are not capable of abstract human constructs regarding ownership. There are no laws or property rights in nature like there are in human society. There's nothing to which people agree to determine who owns what. And even if there were, there's little to compel wild animals to be sympathetic to abstract human constructs about property rights and legal ownership. It is incontrovertibly true that all organisms rely heavily on physical power to achieve inter- and intraspecies consensus on the ownership status of limited resources. Even for sapiens, 
Earth's master abstract thinkers. Physical powers stole the primary means through which they settle territory disputes and resolve conflicting abstract beliefs about property rights. They write rules of law to define property rights, but then they use physical power to solve disputes about what the legitimate rule of law is or what the right property rights should be. While there are many examples in everyday life where laws successfully settle human interest species property disputes, what people often overlook is the long history of physical disputes that were used to instantiate those laws. In other words, our property rights exist because of the wars fought to establish those property rights. Nature's way of sorting out property ownership can therefore be conceptualized as proof of power. Protocol. The physical power exerted to own a resource is self-evident by the fact that a resource is perceivable as owned in the first place. Power appears to be the only non-abstract characteristic about the phenomenon of property ownership that can be seen, detected, or measured, thus independently validated. If an organism detects ownership of a resource, it's probably because power is being projected by another living thing to signal their ownership of that resource. The proof of power protocol is easy to overlook for people who subscribe to the power projection capacity of others to gain and maintain access to limited resources. Most people living in modern society do not participate in the proof of work protocol like wild animals do. So it's easy for them to lose sight of the fact that people are constantly projecting physical power to settle property ownership disputes and establish interspecies dominance hierarchies. Nevertheless, the proof of power protocol is always running. The physical power bill is always being paid, whether we pay it ourselves or outsource it to others. Reference 22. The property rights we enjoy today exist because people were willing to project lots of physical power to claim and maintain those rights. Without the expenditure of watts by living things to secure access to precious resources, living creatures are unable to perceive a resource as being something's property in the first place. Without physical power, resources are either perceived to be unclaimed or research Resource ownership is purely an abstract construct that manifests as a belief system. Belief systems which can be ignored, exploited, or considered illegitimate. <clears throat> oh. Without physical power, resources are either perceived to be unclaimed, therefore not property, or resource ownership is purely an abstract construct that manifests as a belief system. Belief systems which can be ignored, exploited, or considered illegitimate. Chapter 3.2.2, Signaling Ownership by Showing One's Capacity and Inclination to Impose Severe Physical Costs. To illustrate how physical power is used to signal property ownership, consider a scenario where the reader attempts to take freshly hunted meat, a precious physical resource, from a wolf. The wolf would likely signal her ownership of that resource by projecting physical power. She would accomplish this by displaying her capacity and willingness to impose severe physical costs on the reader for trying to deny her access to the meat. This proof of power display would probably look something like figure 8. Figure 8 is a wolf snarling right at you. The wolf's capacity and willingness to impose severe physical costs on the reader to secure her access to the meat is displayed via her snarl, and it would likely leave a clear impression on the reader. Two things should be noted about this display. The first is that her power projection capacity is physically quantifiable. With the right combination of sensors, we could measure her capacity to project power in watts. The second thing to note about this display is the fact that those watts are the only independently verifiable and objective signal of ownership based in physical reality. Her ownership of the meat manifests itself through the power she projects to secure her access to the meat. You're giving up that meat. That snarl serves as her certificate of ownership. In other words, her proof of power is her proof of ownership. 
Now imagine what would happen if the wolf were docile. Imagine if you picked up the meat and the wolf did not snarl and threaten to bite you. She projects no physical power and signals no willingness to impose physically prohibitive, prohibitive costs on you to prevent you from accessing the precious me- resource that is that meat. In that scenario, you and you and neighboring organisms would likely perceive that she is either being friendly and sharing her property with you, or she does not believe the meat is her meat in the first place. Without her physical projection of power, there is no physical signature from which we can perceive or denominate her ownership of the meat, so it's not clear if she owns it at all. This scenario illustrates how closely physical power projection is metacognitively linked to the concept of property ownership. Physical power and aggression are signals of resource ownership. Organisms rely on other organisms to signal property ownership by projecting power. Without physical power projection, it's hard for organisms to detect ownership unless they have the capacity to abstract, to think abstractly like humans do and communicate via common language. But talk is cheap. Abstract constructs of ownership are extremely weak signals of ownership that are often ignored unless they're backed by physical power. You believe this theory yet? The proof of power protocol for property ownership is energy intensive and prone to cause an injury, but it has many positive trade-offs. The main benefits of proof of power ownership protocol is that it's a zero trust, egalitarian, and permissionless protocol. Proof of power is zero trust because it doesn't require trust to function properly. It works the same regardless of whether organisms are trustworthy and sympathetic to our beliefs or not. Proof of power is egalitarian because all organisms are equally subordinate to Watts. Proof of power is also permissionless. The wolf doesn't need to ask for permission from the animal it hunts to take its meat. Her physical power gives her the freedom to do what she wants. Another major benefit of proof of power ownership protocol is that it's exogenous to belief systems. Ownership of the meat passed from the prey to which it originally belonged to, to the wolf who hunted it down for no other reason than because the wolf projected physical power to gain and maintain access to the meat. She doesn't own the meat because she believes she should own the meat. Beliefs don't put dinner on the table. Physical power does. The wolf's continual projection of physical power is why she continues to own the meat. The wolf's continual projection of physical power is why she continues to own the meat. If she were to stop displaying proof of power to signal proof of ownership of the meat, then she would likely lose her access to the meat regardless of what she believes she owns. Now imagine if you picked up the meat, the wolf snarled at you, and you doubled down and snarled back at her. You and the wolf would produce two conflicting signals of ownership because you're both projecting power. In this situation, it wouldn't be clear to neighboring organisms who truly owns the meat. To resolve this property dispute and achieve consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of the meat, more physical power would need to be applied to the situation. It would not be possible to file a lawsuit against the wolf to challenge her custody of the meat. It would not be possible to engage in diplomatic talks with the wolf to draft an agreement about what the proper abstract construct of ownership should be. These options would not be on the table because they require the wolf to be sympathetic to the reader's belief about property rights. And she isn't psychologically, she isn't physiologically capable of that. She doesn't have the biological circuitry nor the brain power to understand the reader's abstract explanation about why the reader believes they are somehow the proper owner of the meat. Much less does she have the inclination to be sympathetic to the reader's belief system when she can simply use her superior physical power to shred the reader to pieces and have even more meat for herself. In lieu of the option for peaceful adjudication, the reader would have to settle the property dispute by entering a probabilistic 
physical power competition to determine the meat's legitimate owner. Some call these probabilistic physical power competitions battles. The winner of the battle will become the newly recognized owner of the meat. Why? For no other reason than because the newly declared owner won a probabilistic physical power competition. Since physical power is the only part of the phenomenon of property ownership that appears to be based in, a sh in shared objective physical reality, physical power competitions are the only non-imaginary way for organisms with no belief systems or conflicting belief systems to resolve disputes about property ownership.